a good day everyone uncle varun again with story time right now today's story is about trinidad and tobago folklore now we have a lot of folklore characters in trinidad and tobago right such as dwens lajabless sukanyas lagahoos and lots more right now the name of the story is today in this book now the name of this book here is Boboy and the Dwens and other stories by our author Mr. Al Ramsawak. Okay. Now you can find this book, Boboy and the Dwens and other stories, at the Sangi Gandhi Public Library under our West Indian J R A M. Okay. Now we have this book available, okay? So you can come and borrow it at the Sangigandi Public Library. Now, the name of the story in this book is the Belmont Lajabless. Okay? Now, let's go. It was a long, long time ago. World War II had not had its influence on the Crown Colony of Trinidad and Tobago. And the governor's residence was the imposing pride of the developing capital city of Port of Spain. Belmont Circular Road was scant of houses and still a gravel path opening out onto the Grand Queen's Park Savannah. The silk cotton tree at the junction was not as huge and spreading as it is seen generations later before it died. However, it was an important landmark of fear and superstition. And it was hoped that it would have lived to be a symbol of folkloric value. In that setting, one night, a cyclist was riding his way home from St. Anne's to his home in the vicinity of St. Francois Valley. He had just swerved onto the Belmont Circular Road near the silk cotton tree where the beam of his carbide headlamp touched upon a woman's dress in a red gown with tiles of frills telescoping down to her feet. She stood at the roadside signaling to stop. Hey, I want you to get my drop home, the lady said. What? What a beauty, he said. <laughs> this lady is my queen, my lover. What beauty, and she's smelling sweet like a rose. A rich perfume scent emitted from her kerchief as she flagged in gesticulation. Hey, my boy, how you going? You all right? In a dainty feminine voice, she asked, are you reaching as far as the valley, sir? You know, I really like your bike or your ride in here. She appeared of a rich creole in complexion, as well as her manner of dress and speech, and the accent she has. Hmm. The anxious man replied, Ah, yes, my lady, my lover. You is my queen, and is a beauty. Hmm. Is dear going self, and I could go even further if you want me to drop here. And I is Odele, the transmit from the valley right there. Is Odele is my name. The fair lady explained, "Oh, kind gentleman." I am very sorry to interrupt your cycling, but I had gone to a party at the governor's palace, and unfortunately I overstayed my time, and so I missed my buggy, and would like a lift on your bicycle. After making several false calls, <coughs> she continued, Ah, sorry, maybe... It's my fault for being so careless. Oh, oh. Hmm. I think that I would rather walk than give you all that trouble, Mr. Odele. Oh, no, 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 no problem, he said. The man said, 
That is no problem, madam. It is my pleasure to give a lovely, beautiful lady like you a ride on my bicycle. And clearing in her hands off the bar, he invited her. My lady, madam, my lover, beautiful. You are beautiful. You smell sweeter than a rose. He told her. You, I'll give you a toe on the bar right here next to me. Long down to the valley. Too afraid? Come and sit down and settle yourself. And let me go. I drop in you any way you want to. Shortly, the lady sat on the bar. And away, the tinsmith pedaled as the gentle breeze kissed to her face she smiled oh how wonderfully you operate this bicycle mr odele oh how wonderfully you are it's the first time i've ever been on a bicycle we must do this more often my lady you know you're real beautiful you know hmm mr odele said oh yes madam and you're smelling sweet. You're smelling like a rose in the night. It's the first time I ever give a nice, beautiful woman like you a two. We must do this more often. You must miss your buggy a little more often, madam. <laughs> the woman started to laugh. As they rode along. She seemed somewhat uneasy, trying to fold one leg over the other. The man asked, uh, It's like you're uncomfortable, my sweetheart, my lover. The road is a little rough up here, and there, you don't worry. We go reach there just now. Not really, she replied casually. I am having a problem keeping my feet off the road. There no problem, madam. Push yourself up on the bar closer to me. So she adjusted herself somewhat as they continued along the road. The woman complained again as she kept on lifting her legs, avoiding the road. Now my hoof seems to be getting in the way, she said. Mr. Odele, in fright, hoof? What are you talking about? You mean your pretty feet? Well, if you think it's pretty, I have no problem with that. At that moment, she kicked up her leg to show him. <gasps> it was indeed a hoof. A cloven foot like a cow foot. Oh, God, why? So you mean you is a larger bless? The horrified man shouted, Oh God, is a larger bless you is? Yes, indeed, oh Mr. Odele. I am, and I'm not pretty. <laughs> Stop. She giggled and then bellowed out in a loud, raucous laughter, <laughs> which echoed to the silent night. And suddenly, she was gone. The larger bless had disappeared. The nervous man with ears on the end pedaled away in a haze. But shortly ahead of him, she mysteriously appeared lumbering along. He passed her, not chancing to look back. A street corner later, he again saw the mysterious lady in red striding away. After passing her for a third time, she called out to me, Oi, Odele, my boy, my partner, look at here. I'll be waiting for you again here. It's a ride. I want to go home. Don't forget me. It's beautiful and beautiful, you say. How could Odele forget that? That was unforgettable encounter, which the man never wished to repeat in his life again. And surely, 
he never again travel that way at the night. And not only that, he avoided even to cast a fleeting glance at a woman after that for fear that she might be a larger bless. The end. Okay? So, the woman in the story was a larger bless. Now, the larger bless is a folklore character. She wears a long gown right down to the ground. She has this white brim straw hat that covers part of her face. And she has one human foot and one cow foot. Yes, one human foot and one cow foot. And she roamed the middle of the night and she put on her perfume and she looks look on look on look on and she lure people away okay and what she has again one human foot and one cow foot all right so that's the end of story time for today so that's our one of our folklore characters of Trinidad and Tobago that is the larger bless all right so you all will check out the Sangagani Public Library Facebook page for more details.